Hey everyone, Nick from Gallery 7. As you can see in front of me here, we are stretching a huge canvas. And there's two ways to stretch a canvas. One is on a strainer bag, which is not quite as good, where the corners are permanently nailed or uh, joined together. This is called the stretcher. And what you'll notice is that this wonderful stretcher from Jack Richardson has these turnbuckles in the corner. And old canvases would have a little wooden wedge in here. So let's say the canvas starts to sag from humidity. You can tighten these up as humidity changes and stretch the canvas out a little bit. But these joints are somewhat flexible as they should be. So what you wanna do is nail or screw, I'm gonna use screws. You wanna nail or screw these together so they're completely square. So I've got my square here. I'm gonna put this clamp on here because when I'm stretching it, when I'm stretching it, I don't want these corners to wiggle and pull things out of square. All right, I've already done the other three corners. This is beautifully square now. Now in here, there are these little tongues of wood that come through, they're slotted and that's what allows it to move. I'm using a slightly big drill for a number six screw. I do not want, I do not want to split those tongues which slide in slots in here and make it movable. Some people use nails, but these are so much easier to get out. Oh, and one final note. I've never done this, but one could absolutely do it. Um, if you make a mistake and put these on the... Let me back up. This is the back of the canvas. The canvas is going to be stretched on this side, under here. If you, by mistake, put these on front, where your canvas covers it up, you have to undo the whole thing. To get these screws out. Okay, I think that's looking good and we're going to show you more a little bit later. Okay, ready to get started. This is a beautiful Aboriginal painting. It does have some real value to it. And the challenge in stretching this, well, it's going to be one of the hardest things I've ever had to stretch. I'm going to do, I'm going to position it a little bit, pre-position just so I can show you what I'm dealing with. So if we come down here, what we can see is, this has to be on a thick strainer. The strainer ends here. This leaves me uh, maybe a little less than an inch to grab and pull. This is going to be a gallery wrap, but I can't grab, pull this, and staple or tack it here. If I pull this, it'll be too high. The tack will rip through it as it pulls it down. So this has to be attached from the edge that you're going to see. So kind of my first challenge is making sure that when I put the black tacks in, they're neat, they're evenly spaced, and they have a nice look to them. That's the first problem. That's doable. Here's the real problem. Now, fortunately, this is the top of the painting. So as our client said, this won't show when it gets hung because this is going to be up high. But the top of the painting leaves me literally almost nothing to grab onto. We're trying to maintain as many of these little dots not wrapping around the edge as possible. So that's the top. And look, there's nothing to grab onto here. You know, I've been thinking about this. And oftentimes you have to remove a staple or a tack to get it tight after you've done a section of it. Whoops, I want to change that a little bit. I'm thinking instead of stapling up here, which is really hard to do, clamping it up here with a series of clamps as if it had been tacked in or stapled in, and then stretching that in with the clamps acting like temporary tacks and then come back and put tacks along here beside the clamps. Um, I'll be able to experiment with that first and um, 
we'll let you know how it goes. Okay, this canvas was so tricky. The lines of the dots are not square. And it's very hard to just start stretching it. Um, you could start stretching this and find that the whole thing's taking off in the wrong direction. So what I've done is I've clamped in various places. I did have clamps here, up here as well, which kind of give me a sense of the best way to let this lie down on the strainer with the best compromise as far as how all these dots line up. If we look at the bottom here, when this gets stretched over here, these, this space and this space will be the same. But what you're gonna notice is that the bottom line of dots, the bottom line of dots is not parallel to the top. And I'm gonna have a much bigger space here. If I decide to take the whole thing, let me just grab something here. If I decide to take the whole thing like this, you stay there, Kelly. If I decide to make the whole thing like this, like so, and I say, okay, I'm going to make the bottom parallel, that would mean me even the, moving the whole thing like that. And if I did that to make the bottom parallel, I would really be screwing up the sides. So the compromise we're making is to get the top and sides lined up as perfectly as we can. And the bottom is the unparalleled part built into the painting. So we're gonna let that be as it is. Now, all these clamps hold it roughly in place. So as I get started, I know I've got it lined up right. Now, I've got nothing on here to grab onto, to stretch. I can do it by my, with my hands a little bit like that. So I'm gonna put a tack in here. Now, when I do the bottom, let's come around here for a minute. When I do the bottom, that's when I take my stretching pliers and I stretch the bottom. And you can see it's gonna tighten up quite nicely. So I've already established a nail there, or a tack there, and a tack over here. And once I establish a tack here and a tack here, I can take it off of the table, stand it up on this edge, and start tacking all the way around. Um, wish me luck. We'll show you more later. Okay, everything's going well. It's actually lining up better than I had hoped as I stretch it. And of course, the danger in this is that as you stretch it, if you don't keep an eye on it, the whole thing can start going crooked on you. But I think I've got this just about right. And I can do a little stretching on the top. So I just pull this as tight as I can get it. I don't like that little bubble there. Hang on a second. I'm gonna come over here a little bit closer and pull a little bit in this direction. See how we flatten that out now? Start my tack. And there we go. And now it's a matter of going all the way around, keeping an eye on how it's landing, and uh, hopefully I'll have this done soon. It's stretched and it's tighter than I had hoped, and I can still tighten it up with these a little bit, and so I think we're in very good shape. These are gonna be easy. We have to make a gallery corner out of this. And you wanna do this without, some people cut the canvas. You'd rather not do that. You wanna pull this up to here, and you wanna tuck all this excess in there. And this gets pulled over like that. And that gives you that nice, clean gallery corner. This will be moved back a little bit from there. What you do have is a little bump here, which you may not be able to see, right here. You can see that. And that is from this. But again, you do not, that's from this, you do not want to cut the canvas to make it seem to fit. Um, let there be a little bump there and put it on the top and the bottom where it's less noticeable. 
And that's how you make a nice gallery corner. All right, this one's gonna be a little trickier. Let's come over here and take a look. I don't have much to work with here. So can I do this and have the fold still on top? I think I can. And then of course this tack's gonna show from here. And I think I'm gonna keep this angle like that because it's on top, it's not going to show, and I don't want that white edge peeking out, and then I can just do this. Okay, I think I've got it figured out, and we'll show it to you when it is One done. Things to do. One, I need to tack all along here and neaten up this back edge. I have to neaten up this as best as I can. But before I do that, let's talk about the canvas. First of all, you remember all the issues there were with stretching this tight because of the top. This is actually tight enough right now. I could call this done. But now imagine if the humidity changes or something changes, this could start to sag if this strainer shrinks a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the Jack Richardson corner keys and I'm just going to do this which is going to spread these corners out a little bit and tighten up the canvas a little bit more. See that corner coming apart? I don't want it any farther apart than that. That's as far as I want to go. So I'm going to do all four corners and then we'll do the tap test and you'll see how tight it becomes. Okay, finally it's done. Uh, it took about as long as I thought. I started at 10 this morning. It's about 4 o'clock now. I think it came out beautifully. It is a lot hotter now that I tightened up the turnbuckles on back with this great uh, stretcher back. Also, what took a lot of work was as I stretched it, I worked really hard to keep these little dots following the, uh, following the strainer. And so overall, I think it looks very square and uh, I really can't wait for a client to see it.